Hey guys, Shark Monkey here, bringing you another review, this time of the Soviet Tier 5 multi roll fighter, the Yakovlev Yak 7. So, first things first, I want to cover this aircraft, guys. Uh, unlike the previous review of the Lag 3, you'll notice that this aircraft has slightly more firepower available to it, in that it has two machine guns mounted over the engine this time, and the same hub mounted cannon. In this case, the aircraft comes equipped at stock with one 20mm, 20mm Schwack cannon and then two 7.62mm Schickass machine guns. I've upgraded in this aircraft to the Schickass to the 12.7mm uh, Berezin machine guns. And there's also the option of upgrading the 20mm cannon to a 30mm SH-37 auto cannon in the nose. I don't think I'll be doing this for this aircraft. Uh, I think we're going to stick with the 20mm until I get to the Act 9 this is more a personal play style. I value kind of um, consistent firepower and consistent damage per minute over the uh, the Alpha that's provided by the 37. Some of you guys won't agree, some of you probably won't upgrade to this gun and uh, yeah some of you do better with it than I do. I, I personally just prefer this kind of 50 cal 20 mil setup just for the constant firepower you can put out and the longevity you get for the uh, trigger time for the aircraft. So outside of that with it being a multi-roll aircraft, it also gets the options to mount rockets, which I have on this aircraft. You get six RS-82 rockets. I generally use these for taking out ships or ground targets, finishing off ground targets, helping, you know, the ground attackers and the bombers capture points. Uh, you can spunk them at aircraft every so often, but they quite, are quite ineffective at doing that. Usually best used against the bomber flights spawned by the command centers in certain maps. And then, of course, as you can see here, one uh, airframe upgrade from the X7A to the X7B, which I think provides you slightly better movability and more hit points. And then from the stock engine, there were two engine upgrades in this one, unlike the three engine upgrades for the Lag 3. Uh, let's go into service tree. As you can see with this aircraft, I don't run universal belts. I don't think it needs it. I think there's enough firepower with the 250 cals and then whichever cannon you choose to use that you don't need to run universal belts in this. Of course, the outboard rockets, because I choose to use them, so they're there. And then the consumables, same for the Lag 3. Control surface trim to help keep your wings and tail in tip-top condition. First aid dressing package, of course, to keep your pilot healthy. And fire extinguishers to put out fire if you happen to be set on fire, which, again, is uncommon for this aircraft, but not impossible. I go back to the ghost tree again for equipment. I've gone for a similar setup to the Lag 3. Improved covering for extra hit points and better resistance to damage to the wings and tail. Lightweight airframe for better maneuverability in all axes. And then concealing livery this time because you can go after ground targets with this, both with the rockets and with the, the forward firing armament. So having less damage inflicted to you by the AAA and by, again, what defensive gunfire as well if you're going after ground attackers or bombers is always a nice little bonus to have because every time you fly straight and level to take out one of those air guns with your cannons, they do seem to take quite nasty chunks out of your hit points without this upgrade. With this upgrade, it does lessen it a bit, but they are still quite dangerous to you. Crew skills, I haven't got any on this pilot so far, but like I said last time with Lag 3, I'll probably go for the same setup of having aerodynamics, aerobatics expert first, uh, follow that up with battle tested, and then lastly I'll probably go with engine guru. I don't think I'll pick up uh, marksman on this because I don't think it really needs it, I don't think it's worth the effort putting in. So I think just uh, aerobatics expert, battle tested, and then engine guru will be fine for this aircraft. But if you guys go beyond that, you know, at that point it's up to you, personal choice of how you play it. Outside of that, um, I will mention that although it doesn't appear often catches fire, it's not actually that bad. Although you do still have the lowest fireability to watch out for with most Russian aircraft. And the airspeed and movability of this aircraft is on par with the Lag 3. So it's a pretty good all-rounder. Moves on to the Act 9 at Tier 6, which is another aircraft that I'm going to look forward to eventually getting a review for you guys. With that being said, uh, I think we'll keep this one short and sweet and I'll end it here. Got two battles coming up for you uh, on this review. So I'll uh, let you guys watch those and catch you next time. Thanks very much. You are approaching the front line. Off we go.
Center is ours. Establishing communication with the main headquarters. Enemy bombers inbound. Don't let them reach their target. Fields are ours. We've got the enemy contained. <laughs> Receiving reports about rapidly deteriorating weather conditions. Support will be unable to reach you. Do you read me? Over.
heavy. Do you copy? Over. Almost got us. We've taken over the command center, requesting support. done what you could. Go back to base. You are approaching the front line. Off we go. Concentrating near the plant. Be extremely careful. Thank you. 
battery is in sight. Keep it up. Receiving reports about rapidly deteriorating weather conditions. Support will be unable to reach you. Do you read me? Over. We cannot support you any longer. The storm is too heavy. Do you copy? Over. I'm proud of you, pilot. Head back home.